Hey, welcome back bikers. You already know what's going down today. You already know what's happening. Today we'll be finally assembling the engine back together, man. I'm so excited for this. Okay, not just that. I'll also be showing you guys how to advance timing with the stock components. I don't want to waste any more time. Let's get straight into this, man. As you guys can see, we already have built the bottom end of the engine. Why is that? Well, long story short, man, uh, filming this would have been really boring since we just built the stock bottom end again. We just changed the bearings, the connecting rod, as you can see here, this, uh, there's the, how do you call it, the box over here. We put a prox connecting rod anyways. Today we'll be assembling the head, the cylinder, advancing timing with the stock components that we'll be showing you later on. Yeah, and other modifications as you can see over there, but I'm not gonna show you that. Keep on watching the video. <laughs> okay, Pa, should we get started? Okay, let's go. Yeah, 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 let's go, let's go. Okay guys, we have all that we need to build this engine, well not the engine, to build the top end back together. We have the gaskets, the needle cages, the pistons, well piston, it's just one, <laughs> the cylinder head, the cylinder itself. Yeah, let's get straight to work. Pa, can... pa where are you Pa? Come here. I need the filler gauge. You need the filler gauge? Wait, wait, hold on, let me see. This is a filler gauge. It's basically spacers. We're opening up the piston as you can see. Ah, uh, don't rip the paper. <laughs> no, the piston rings. These are the piston rings. It's just one. We got a dual ring piston, that's, I mean, it's a one oh, The gentry. <laughs> yeah. We got a, a dual a dual ring piston, simply because it's a street bike at the end of the day. This piston is forged with a graphite coating. Also, this piston is so light, man. Uh, pa, can we get like the old old stock piston so we can compare like the weight? Hold on, we'll, we'll be weighting the pistons. Okay, we got the stock piston right here. It's the one that was on the bike before. We're gonna be weighing them, you know, see the difference. Hold on, let me, let me scale. Tear the thing, okay. As you can see, it's grams right now. First of all, let's go with the, you know, with the stock one. Yeah, yeah, let's measure the stock one, as you can see. 138.9 grams let's round it up 139 139 grams the stock one now the what do you call it the modified well not the modified one the Wasner one forged it's gonna be 10 grams yeah yeah 128.1 128 grams that's so much lighter compared to this needle cage Yo, look at that thing. Kinda scared to even touch it. It looks so clean, man. <laughs> and the clips. Okay, right now we're gonna be checking the piston clearances. As you guys can see, it should be 0.05 millimeters. So we got another more precise fuel gauge. As you guys can see, 0.25 more precise anyways we got a piston inside the cylinder and yeah my dad is gonna be checking the clearances let's go you're gonna be checking the 0.05 right pop yeah okay oh, yeah. Eight first. where's the five yeah. as you guys can see it goes in it's a really tight fit you want to try the eight yeah you want to try eight now he's trying the 8 millimeter, well not the 8, 0.08 millimeter one. As you guys can see, it's not going in. Yeah. That means that the clearances are right. So now we can start uh, building the piston. Well, not building, assembling the piston. That means putting in the uh, needle cages, the um, piston rings, etc. Oiling the piston up, right, Pop? Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's go, let's go. Let's go. Remember the letter N has to be facing the top part, it's not focusing. Some people oil their piston rings, but it's not necessary right now. You just oil it afterwards, right Pa? What? Oil the piston rings. Do you need to oil the piston rings now or even later? It doesn't After. matter, right? Yeah. Make sure to lube everything. As I said before, the piston rings, when you mount them on the piston like that, you don't have to lube it. But when you're mounting it on the piston, obviously when you're putting the cylinder head on, well not the cylinder head, I mean the cylinder on, 
obviously you have to lube it then. Last clip in and yeah. That looks so good man. Dang, that looks good. Make sure that the clip is well fit it's well secured, you know. There's a little groove for the piston uh, seizure ring to sit in. Make sure it's well seated in there. Pulling up the piston rings, you know. Pistol walls too. And if the gaskets will be also showing you how to check the squish and all the measurements, these are brand new. Right now he's measuring the thickness of the gasket. I don't know if it shows. 50. 0.50? 0.50 right here. 75. I just gotta be 75. <laughs> this one has to be mad thin, bro. This is gotta be yeah, 030. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Dad is trying out the 0.50 gasket first. And then we'll try out the 30, the 60, the 75. Not the 60, I mean the 75 and the 30 to see which one is best, obviously. Because we gotta get the squish right, you know? The squish is basically the compression between the. This, not the compression, I mean the space between the piston and the cylinder head, you know, when it's at top dead center. Tighten all the bolts up. Okay, my dad just got a one millimeter uh, soldering tin. Tin is the metal basically, you know. We're gonna check the squish with that. Usually the stock squish is about 1.40 millimeters. 1.50. Uh, 1.50, 1.40, 1.50. We're not gonna be running the stock squish because I mean, what the hell? <laughs> We're gonna tune the whole engine and run the stock squish. What the? <laughs> you know what I mean? Our our, our squish goal is basically how much? Uh, 60, 70, 70, yeah. 65, 70. As you guys can see, that's the shape that you gotta form to get all the angles, all the sides, basically. Some, uh, how do you call it, some grease yes. to hold on to the piston. Don't send it all the way down, you know? just a little bit. Stick it right in the middle. Now you gotta spin the crank. Now we take the <laughs> head apart again. As you guys can see over here, I don't know if it quite, if you guys can quite see that. Hold on. Uh, I won't focus, but just take my word for it. It's uh, it's kind of compressed there. Why is it not focusing? Focus. Okay, yeah, it's kind of compressed there. There's a mark where the piston hit the cylinder head. We'll be measuring it now. Our squish goal, as I said before, is 65. 90. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta go lower. Yeah. We're gonna go with the with the 30. Yeah, 30 millimeter. Yeah, 30, 30 millimeter. millimeter yeah. Uh, how do you call this? I for I always forget. It's the 30 millimeter. Uh, God damn it! How do you call it, Pa? The gasket, yes. gasket, the 30 millimeter gasket. <laughs> so fast forward, we uh, just measured the squish with the 0.30 uh, millimeter gasket. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I don't want to touch it, I don't want to ruin anything, you know? <laughs> okay. I'm guessing uh, 65, 70, all the shit. 63. Yeah, that's 64. good. 64, 65 basically, yeah. All right, bet. My dad is putting brand new washers in uh, for the head bolts because those uh, washers could potentially break. 
And we do not want that happening. Why? Because it's a pain. <laughs> Make sure that you uh, tighten them up in a cross pattern. My dad right now is gonna get the torque wrench, as you guys can see here. And it's gonna set this thing to 30 newton meters. Put them in a cross pattern, as I said before. Okay, we got the engine on the other work bench, and now I'll be showing you guys how to advance timing. It's pretty simple, it's not that complicated. Make sure to follow along. Okay, let's, let's start. As you guys can see, this is the modification we had to do on the engine housing. This is the pickup mount, as you can see. Uh, you gotta be careful with a Dremel tool, not to poke a hole in the engine uh, housing though. This is easy to do, just be careful. You can easily do it with a Dremel or with a file, you know? Okay guys, as you can see, this is the pickup sensor. The modification that has been done to this sensor is quite simple. It's basically the bolt holes, as you guys can see. We enlarged the bolt holes, we made them oval, as you can see. That is to move the sensor uh, from side to side, you know, that's how, that's how we are gonna advance timing on this bike. Okay, my dad is gonna be mounting the coil pack. in the flywheel you gotta make sure to get get the align the key with the indentation in the flywheel okay now my dad is gonna be putting the pickup sensor in the stock position so that we can show you the difference from the stock to the advanced timing now we'll be putting this dial gauge onto the cylinder head so we can find the top dead center so we gotta turn the flywheel and see when the dial gauge uh, stops moving. You know, it will go on the, it will start going the other way around once it hit top, <laughs> once it hits top dead center. There we go. That's top dead center right there. Obviously, we zeroed the dial gauge indicator and stuff. And now that we have top dead center, we can finally go ahead and start advancing timing. Okay, since the stock part is extremely different from a modified part, for example, a PVL, uh, it's, it's totally different, okay? Even the way we're gonna tune this is different. Basically, the only way we can tune this is by moving the pickup sensor backwards if you wanna advance it and forwards if you wanna retard timing. However, there's a limit to how much you can move the sensor as well. The max, I would say, if you wanna stay safe, is 0.10 millimeters and the, the absolute max is like 0.15 right pal yeah, yeah first of all also when you advance timing it always got to start from top dead center because how are you gonna know how many degrees to advance okay let's go now we're gonna move the pickup sensor and then you will know how much you advance timing once you go back with the flywheel and we will read the millimeters there. Okay, you gotta uh, use a filler gauge when you're tightening these things up. For now, it's uh, 70. Well, not 70. Yeah, 70. Uh, 0 0.70. You know? The distance between the sensor and the pickup over there. The magnet, you know, on the flywheel. 0 0.70 degrees. Well, oh, millimeters. But I keep on saying degrees, but it's millimeters. Okay, now let's go back to top dead center. Let's see how much we advanced. Let's go, Paul. 10. That's 10 millimeters right there. Okay. No, that's 13. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's good. That's good. As you guys can see now, the two points are aligned and it says uh, 13 millimeters. So basically, we just advanced timing on 0 0.13. You know, that's good. The max is 0 0.15. 13 is not bad and obviously the clearance over there is 0 0.70 you know and just like that we just advanced timing man uh, how much by 0 0.13 right that's huge it might not seem like a lot when you hear 0 0.13 especially when you hear like the Saletra or PVL guys talking about how many millimeters three millimeters and stuff but these engines these bikes are already advanced uh, when they are stock 
0.12 degrees is actually huge you will feel the difference well that was easy we had we we basically just advanced timing quick mod that you guys can do easily the clutch housing okay you get a drill out uh, these holes over here drill them out and you will get something like this we do this to make the clutch housing lighter yeah that was a quick mod uh, let's get back to the engine basically <laughs> Okay, so right now what we will be doing is basically uh, removing the stock parts from the reed valve and putting these, hold on, hold on, where is it? There we go, these Boysen, uh, what's it, dual, dual system reed valve, right? Dual stage, uh, yeah, because there's, as you can see, what this does, it gives me more, uh, let's say, torque at the bottom and also at the top end. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> this reed cage looks sick, man. Let's put the brand new gasket in. Gasket, yeah. yeah. With some grease, obviously. Let's pack on there. And then let's grab our nifty brand new <laughs> reed cage. That's not carbon fiber. It's not even fiberglass. It's a, it's a different. It's a different kind of sheet. I don't. I don't really know. But yeah, it looks. It looks clean, man. It looks clean. There we go. Oh boy, that looks. That looks good. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, guys. One quick thing about the, about the ECU, basically. Hold on. Oops. Make sure to poke this hole out over here. Why is that? Once you poke the hole out, you basically unlock the ECU. The stock ECU is RPM limited. Once you unlock the ECU, you'll probably get up to like a 12,000 RPM. But obviously, man, the RPM, it's also controlled by the carburation. Well, bikers, that's all for today, man. We finally got this engine built. The engine is basically finished, okay? We, we just... All we have to do is install the covers, the rest of the parts, like the carburetor and stuff. But we will be doing that uh, when we are assembling the bike, basically. When we are putting the engine inside the bike. Anyways, I, I nearly forgot, man. About the next video. The next video will be about a thing when you guys don't even know. You guys will never even guess. I'm gonna put hints on my Instagram, so make sure to follow me there. It's gonna be somewhere on the screen now. Yeah, that's that's it, man. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and tell me something in the comments, man. Guess what, what the next video will be about. Yeah, that's all. Peace out, man. See you on the next one.